Welcome to the Helix Hour, brought to you in part by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for the Helix Hour are provided by Rode Microphones. Now, let's talk some Helix. everyone happy sunday to you all and welcome to the helix hour we are live i hope everyone is enjoying your weekend beautiful beautiful weather here in southwestern ontario and i'm hoping it's well your way as well today i'm joined by a familiar face uh, you saw him here back on the show probably last fall from line six himself eric klein how are you doing eric how's it going eric it's good to have you hi everybody out there we're gonna need some code words i think i will maybe some people in the chat can give us some code words later but uh, it's gonna be confusing with eric and eric i have a question for eric okay which one is it the, well, it'll be the only the only questions will be for Eric that has the most knowledge, which is you. So um, and we'll just we'll direct say, Eric with the C and the Helix shirt. Yeah, yeah that doesn't help either. So. That is right. That is right. We're really confusing. We didn't we didn't get the memo of what we're going to be wearing. Um, I could have worn my other Helix shirt, but it's OK. We're not going to a ball or a fashion uh, parade or anything like that. So I think we'll be we'll be fine. So listen, it's great to have you back. Yeah. It's been a while. I'm really happy to have you back. And I know you've been busy, uh, very, very busy. Mm-hmm. And on top of being busy. You've got a recently a new promotion, and I'd love to share, uh, have you share with our audience uh, what that entails. Um, yeah, so April 1st, um, I became Chief Product Design Architect of Yamaha Guitar Division. So um, I don't know if everybody's uh, aware of this, but come April 1st, Line 6 is now part of uh, a larger conglomerate of, of brands, which includes Yamaha. Um, it shouldn't, it's not going to affect uh really anything right away but the the long-term advantages here are that yamaha and line six are going to be working much closely much more closely together and and all of uh the majority of yamaha guitar products will now be developed in our facility in calabasas so not not necessarily from line six people but we're bringing in a lot of yamaha people into calabasas as well and we're spending a lot of people sending a lot of people to Japan. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of Line Sixers just got back from uh, Hamamatsu last week. So, so lots of meetings, uh, trying to figure out how to make things a lot more efficient, um, make our end users a lot happier, be able to crank out updates faster, that sort of thing. So, nice. Uh, there's a lot to be learned from Yamaha because they've been around forever. Yeah, and they are the biggest music company in the world. So. Um, there's a lot that we're learning from them and believe it or not, they're actually learning quite a bit from us. Uh, We tend to be a lot faster and nimble and we react to the market a bit faster because Yamaha is so big. Um, so there's, it's, uh, it's truly beneficial for sure. I think that's a great relationship for sure. And I was kind of one of the last people to the parade to, to realize the merger between the two of you. I remember having you and Nick on the show back in the fall, you know, it's silly mm-hmm. me. I'm, I'm not embarrassed to admit it, but I, you know, Nick was playing a real nice Pacifica guitar and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I don't get, maybe he just likes Pacifica, but I didn't really notice the, you know, I didn't get the, the gist of it. Right. But that's really, really cool. Great products on both ends. And I like the fact how you've mentioned uh, that there is learning both ways. It's not just one sided, uh, a great relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. And the fact now, too, like you mentioned, the resources now, um, you know, they can provide you with resources, like you say, maybe additional staff or just resources to mm-hmm. get things out on a, on a, on a timely basis. And uh, R- R&D uh, is probably, you know, more that can be put into that. Uh, there's so many benefits that we, we as consumers may not even realize. Oh, absolutely. And and what's nice about Yamaha is they're the, they're the size in which they actually – have dedicated R&D departments that mm-hmm. aren't actively working on specific products. Line six, unfortunately, we don't have enough people to just go, hey, let's do this research project and figure this cool problem out. We just don't have that luxury, but Yamaha does. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much so that um, every year they do a tech summit where uh, Yamaha employees will show all of the R&D projects that they've worked on over the years. And um, I've not had the privilege of seeing one in person yet, mm-hmm. but I've heard that there's a lot of just jaw-dropping stuff there. Do you think you'll um, be attending one? And, and not just not just in audio, but also in manufacturing. I wasn't aware that uh, Yamaha makes all of the uh, metal inlays on the super expensive Lexus cars no way. for Lexus. Wow. So there's Yam- yeah, there are Yamaha luxury wood and metal uh, like melds in super high-end Lexus cars made by Yamaha. It's very, 
it's very they have their they have their tendrils everywhere yeah well that's the thing like the company itself like a lot of us a lot of us are familiar with like yamaha drums and pianos and guitars and things like that and like actually pretty much every instrument you can think of now of course we under the umbrella with line six and yamaha together but the manufacturing like uh, i i knew about their obviously their motorcycles and and other kind of automotive mm-hmm. things i didn't know anything about what you just said but it's a company that people just don't realize its reach, its global grab on yeah. a little bit of everything. It's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's not just Yamaha. You know, like Roland, they uh, they make a a good portion of their income comes from large format poster printers. Really, a lot of people aren't aware of that either. So isn't that something? Uh, and Roland and Yamaha are in the same city too, in Japan, south of Tokyo. They're in okay. Hamamatsu, it's just across. They're probably eight or nine miles from each other. So. Oh, that's great. Well, do, do you think you'll be, ever be attending one of these summits that you just mentioned? I'd better. I've been yeah. bugging Marcus over and over again. you got to send me the next one. That'd be great, yeah. Yeah, like a tech summit where you get to see all the latest technology mm-hmm. what's coming down the pipe. Obviously, I know you're in the loop as it is, but getting to see some of this stuff before it even uh, you know gets to yeah. some of your other staff, that's fantastic. Yeah, and, and what's nice is uh, is it is the technology itself is is sort of separated from how the end user perceives it or how it ends up, how it ends up being productized. So then part of my job is to go in and look at the technology and go, Oh, this would be so cool if we could use it for this box, or I bet we could put this in helix, or I bet, I bet, uh, I bet this could improve the reliability of, uh, the jack sensing circuit on this you know it's a yeah. lot of boring stuff right but collectively it ends up improving products across the board so well that's that's fantastic well i'm very happy to, number one to hear about your uh, promotion well deserved as well too i mean you just got back off of a tech award as well too at nam thank you yeah let's, let's, thank you. let's i mean let's talk about that for very briefly it wasn't on mm-hmm. the itinerary for today but because of that promotion as well too that's awesome let's share with us the tech award that you received um at nam uh, yeah, we. I should, I should remember what it was for. It was for uh, best instrument uh, processing and amplification, I believe. And okay. that was that was Helix LT that won that award. So that's fantastic. That's and we just won a MIPA award uh, at Music Mesa for HX Effects too. Saw that. So. That's great. And we're going to talk some HX effects now. And the nice thing mm-hmm. is, too, it's, it's had some time to have some legs and grow a little bit. Uh, it's out there and uh, just it, people, you're seeing it everywhere. At first, it was really cool. You guys were at NAM, uh, day of NAM, day one. You're seeing a couple of these things popping up because some of the dealers like your, uh, I'm not sure if it was Sweetwater or I forget who had them out there first, but some people had them. And then day of NAM, your people are sh- sending in pictures and you guys are seeing that. You're like excited and we're, everyone's excited. But now it's been out there in the wild. People know how to use it and we're seeing it greatly. So we're going to talk heavily about HX as well, too, because that's something you're uh, actively sure. involved in. Mm-hmm. So let's go say hi to everybody over in the chat. And I have to give a huge, I just saw a $50 super chat donation. That's from Django. Um, I hope, I, he's a friend of mine on Facebook and I hope I don't pronounce his name wrong. Django Amadeus O'Connell. So thank you very much for the $50 uh, shout out. He says, I love this podcast. Thank you for all your hard work. It obviously goes into a production of this quality. I'm a solo classical guitarist. My main guitar is a 151 year old 1867 Martin guitar model 220. Uh, uh, I have a JT uh, V89F. I, I have that as well. Love it. And the Helix Rack. Man, that is, I would just love to experience that instrument. I wouldn't want to touch it, but I would love to uh, be in its presence. That's awesome. Right. Very cool. Let's go back and say hi to a bunch of other people as well, too. Space Cadet Howdy is here. And let's go over and we'll turn on the chat on the screen here as well, too. Um, Space Cadet says, Howdy, Phoenix River is here. Space Cadet says, Hey, my bad timing. NHL playoff game starting an NBA playoff game in 30 minutes. Uh oh, sorry. I see I'm not a sports guy, so I'd have to I have to kind of get in the sports realm and figure <laughs> out what's when's a bad day to broadcast. Uh, Phoenix River says, I'm Eric too. Eric Fest 20, 2018. So we've got three Eric's in the house. Full circle says we'll Uh-oh. call we can call him DI. Carlos Santen is a fresh. You'll right. be happy to know this. Carlos Santen is a as a tube guy like me, uh, EVH through and through, and um, I've converted him over to uh, a, a very active Helix user. He he got picked up a um, an HX FX and found a good deal on a used um, uh, Helix and upgraded. So he's he's loving right. it to death. Ricky Mees is here saying hello, Eric. And Beautiful you can use them both at the same time. Yes, you can. Uh, the, and we'll talk about that. Uh, Ricky Mee says, hello, Eric, beautiful day here in Stedman, Missouri. Carlos Santon, Yamaha is a great company. I think the Line 6 Yamaha relationship will be great for us guitar players. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And uh, speaking of great uh, guitar players and companies, John Mulvey from uh, 3G Guitars is here saying, go, Eric, howdy. What a great partnership. Congrats. Will from Guitar News Network is here saying, hello, all. Uh, Pino1, hey, Eric and Eric. Don Shepard, good day, Eric and all. 
uh, Space Cadet. My first guitar was a white Yamaha 1987, great guitar. And I've got a Pacifica 921 behind me, which I love to death. Uh, Carlos Santan, I have a Yamaha with a Floyd, very nice instrument. I still play it regularly, despite having a couple of Fender Wolves now. Fred Siegel, proud owner of several Yamaha music products and gigging with the Mighty Helix floor for two years. This is exciting news. Um, let me see. Oh, this is cool. Uh, hello, Eric and Eric. If R&D resources will be available, do you, th- uh, do you think that the Variax technology can be pushed to the next level? Uh, might be worth finding out. And that's a question I didn't have for you, but um, you know, I know maybe you don't get too, too much into the Variax. Maybe you do. Um, where is Variax in a, in a position where you guys are content with or maybe would like to see it go? Uh, we're never content with anything ever. Okay, cool. So, so it, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. To, it's almost like, um, releasing a film mm-hmm. and all of the actors have to come back and they have to do all of the press junkets for their film, even though they're, they're now working on the third film after the film that's being released. So like, for example, when HX effects came out, like, oh, that's right. That's right. We have HX effects that we have to get out. We've been working <laughs> on four firmwares in the future and future products are like, all right, let's go back and celebrate what we did, you know, six months ago. Not that we had stopped developing it or right, stopped right. continuing, you know, fix bugs and that sort of thing. But, um, but as far as Variax goes, we're, we're never going to be content. I mean, we're always going to look for ways to improve things. And when, and I don't, I don't know that, that we can talk about any new products no, coming out course. necessarily, but the technology is certainly something that we're we're actively pursuing. Okay, that's good. that's good to know for sure. And I do like that, and I respect that, and admire the fact that you know some people they they just okay. Well, we got this out, we can coast on this now. And you're you're. I've actually seen you guys even pull back firmwares, you know, because of that. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's okay. Well, we're we're getting it out there because we want to make you guys happy, and and you need this, and you want this, whatever. And then okay, but we ourselves as a company are not 100 percent happy with this. And if we can't be happy, you won't be happy, and you'll pull back a firmware which you've done recent. Well, not recent, recent, but because of that, mm-hmm. you want it to be perfect, and that's really well respected. No, absolutely, and 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 it's not just because it's one piece of firmware for mm-hmm. one product. No, this is also the firmware for likely the next generation of products that are coming down the pipeline too. Oh, so, okay. so it's really important. So, so when we release a firmware update for a Helix or HX product, we're actually updating, you know, four or five different products simultaneously, plus all of the variations of the editor, yeah. even though it appears as one editor, when you download it, it's actually a separate editor for each product that, you know, that, that then becomes activated when you plug that particular product in. So, yeah. So each firmware update is actually eight or nine updates at once as one gigantic platform. So as we go forward, um, it just there's just a lot of technical debt when you're when you're because you now have to support all of these different things. But the advantage here is that we don't have to uh, end of life anything. You know, um, you know now the the life cycle of a product is now a much much longer because we're continually updating everything going forward. So. Mm-hmm. The sheer fact that we're able to create new products helps the old products by definition. I, I like that. And I mean, I'm, I have no understanding of engineering and software, uh, you know, programming and things like that. But I would imagine it would be much, it's never a simple world for, for your team. But if it was, as you say, one firmware can bounce to eight products, it would be, mm-hmm. it's a lot simpler to do something like that than to have, okay, we need version one of, uh, you know, each one of those softwares or firmwares for every one of those products. That could be a living nightmare. It's, it's a nightmare enough for one, I'm sure. Imagine if you're doing that for individual eight different products. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, in the last nine months, and I've, I've, I think we've briefly discussed this here before, mm-hmm. uh, we, the engineering team started working on this thing called Helix Core, mm. which was is the central repository of code that, that runs on, on the plugin, that runs in the editor, that runs on all the firmware. So for example, if there's a new feature that we come out with, instead of having to code it 10 different times, you code it once it gets deployed to all of the different SKUs, including the software. And then our QA team goes in and goes, well, there's a bug with this particular SKU and there's a different bug with this particular SKU. So now instead of having to code everything multiple times, you code it once. And then if necessary, you fix a couple bugs if they need to be cleaned up. So it makes things a lot faster and a lot more convenient. 
I like that. How I can relate to that myself, and this is going to sound a little bit sound simplistic to you, but I'm a web developer for for what I do for a living. And you know, a lot of times in, in a WordPress mm-hmm. environment, you know, a lot of people are using WordPress. It's almost like a multi-site. So if I'm using multi-site for you know five, ten, twenty customers, I can apply a different theme to different customers. But if I want to do plugin updates, I can push them. I can do it once, and and it's pushed to all sites. So a kind of a very kindergarten mm-hmm. comparison. But certainly no, nowhere yep. near as technical as what you guys face. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us for sure. And I think that also is another benefit to a lot of us. Let's talk a little bit about some power cabs. Uh, last week we had Brandon sure. on here who is the, the product lead or the product owner on, in that department. And that also now, that's the, the new big talk at line six is mm-hmm. these power cabs and people looking for um, the ultimate for a monitor or a cabinet. If people want that uh, speaker in the room kind of thing. And uh, the people, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch last week's episode. But I'm curious to see because it was made, you know, not necessarily just for Helix, as obviously it's from your own company. Um, mm-hmm. Was how much involvement did your team have? Like, did, did the the uh, speaker comp- the speaker division speak to the Helix division and back and forth? And how much interaction did you t- your teams have together? Uh, it was mainly towards the beginning and the and the end. Okay. So. So in the, in the beginning, we sort of did this blue sky brainstorm of, hey, what are all the possibilities of features and functionality and, and communication protocols that could potentially be in this marriage of Helix and PowerCab? Um, let's just make sure that the hardware can support it so that when, when the engineers are picking up components and DSPs and MCUs and, you know, all the way down to the LCD, make sure that we don't paint ourselves into a corner a year and a half later and go, oh, crap, we should have picked a slightly faster DSP because now we can't do this thing. Yeah. So so once we sort of had this roadmap of all possibilities and we always over design products. So people are always seeing a, a very small, uh, small piece of the overall wish list. And sometimes there are reasons why we don't do it besides not being able to get to it. Mm-hmm. But we make sure that that we we can go there if, if we have the opportunity to. And then towards the end, we made sure that we uh, met up with Brandon and the team to make sure that, yes, all of those pieces are still in play if and when we want to get to that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and then Brandon and I worked uh, really closely to define what how those could potentially work. Uh, and then it's just a matter of, uh, of finding the time and the resources for it. So. Oh, that's good. I like the fact how the 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 plus version of the of the cabinet, the one twelve plus, can load IRs. Now it's just 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 mm-hmm. the plus version, right? That's correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Now that that what that means to some people, and I mean, I I have a very limited Helix knowledge. I use it every day, but I'm not I'm not an uh, all knowing burrito when it comes to Helix. But in layman's terms, that means you can free up a block on your Helix. Um, what, what could an IR take overall roughly like, uh, on, on the Helix? Could you put a couple effects in its place if you weren't using an IR? I know oh, they're all yeah. different. Uh, I want to say, cause the, the IRs in PowerCab are 2048 points, okay. which is the, the larger of the two IRs in Helix. Okay. And I, I don't want to speak out here. I want to say there, that's probably 18% of one of the DSPs. So 9% overall wow. for a single 2048 IR. So, so yes, you could conceivably offset uh, your IRs externally. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we think that that's the primary use case. We see the primary use case for the IRs for people like uh, all of our HD 500X users who unfortunately are not able to load IRs into that product. Now they can. They can take advantage of impulse responses with PowerCab. And because that has L6 link output, they can run digitally. So it's so in, in a way, it's almost like getting IRs in their HD 500X or you know, anything else like a, like a boss product or, you know, any of the other modelers that have been around forever that don't load IRs as well, including line six or, yeah. or others. So, Oh, that's cool. That was going to be my next question then. So it can be the, the other people that using other brands out there can certainly take advantage of that. Absolutely. And, and because the plus has an AES EVU input, if you, if you're a fractal owner, if you're a Kemper owner, you can run a 110 ohm XLR cable. And now you, you save a pair of uh, D to A's and A to D's. So you actually have lower latency and you have a better signal to noise ratio. So there's an advantage there as well. Oh, big time. Well, that, that's really good to know. And, and um, I'm, actually, I'm going to have one here on Thursday. UPS tells me I have one coming here Thursday. So I'm very much looking forward to trying that. Right. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. And I'll, I'll pop on YouTube that night and we'll do a first reaction review and, uh, and have a look. So I'm very excited. Now, you've had a chance. Of, do you have one itself uh, at home? 
I, I don't, you unfortunately. Don't um, I am no. So I, so because it's not my project, yeah. I have to wait in line like all the other line sixers. <laughs> And um, I would I get a discount mm-hmm. and they would rather sell to customers, of course, I know. because they don't get the same discount I get. So yeah. I, I have to wait in line, which is fine. Well, that's cool, um, and I'm, I'm actually going to have it set up here so I don't even have to turn on the computer because up until uh, well, currently until I get power cab, I have to boot logic just to be able to play anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that can, depending on what you've got going, just like I was telling you, I was having some hardware issues here just before we went live. And, you know, you don't necessarily always want to have, uh, when you get that creative inspiration, you want to just plug in and go and the power cap will let exactly. you do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. Or if you don't have, want to play through headphones, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, next question I had for you is, um, you know, we, we never really talked about this before. Like we always talk about the technology that, you know, you're directly and, and directly and indirect, directly responsible for, but we never really asked you how you like to use it. What are some of your favorite amps and effects that are uh, in the Helix? So this is going to sound horrible. No, it won't. I don't use Helix hardware okay. at all. You I use it at work okay. to do all the testing. Yeah. And we have we have our our cafeteria downstairs is this is this kind of largest club sized venue we call Carnegie Hall with a stage and mm, yeah. you know motion controlled lights and everything. So we go down there and we'll jam on on occasion. But I'm I've been a studio guy for so long that I've been using Helix Native. That is that is my my baby. So that's. That's where, so even though Helix Native wasn't originally my project, that mm-hmm. was the one Line 6 thing that I've been waiting for f- since I started Line 6. So so that's what I do because I, I want to be able to run it on everything. Yeah. So I'll run preamps on vocals. I'll run distortion pedals on keyboards. Um, the Fuzz Factory model I'm a huge fan of because you can make things sound really ugly and really disgusting, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think I was going to like the Placator as much as I did, but I'm really a fan of that. Yeah, it's one of my um, favorites. Ended up uh, repurposing a bunch of my guitar tracks using that. Yeah. Um, uh, I love all the weird so uh, the the Space Echo was something I championed in for for a long time. I like to really abuse that. Yeah. Uh, crank the feedback to 100 and then swipe the swipe the time so it self oscillates and squeals and gets really weird and then you record that. And then you find little parts of feedback gremlins that sound really cool, and you chop that up and loop it. And you're like, "Where'd you get that sample?" It's like, "No, that's a guitar." So that's perfect. Well, I'm glad to hear that about Native because I'm new to Native. I picked it up recently, and I don't, I didn't know it that well. So one night, I like to do these bl- flying blindly live demos of products, and I find that's you know because you can watch some of these demos that are out there on YouTube, but they've been pr- rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed, and there's so many outtakes that the more so outtakes than there is good footage. And so now I could either fall flat on my face when I do these live demos, or I could go okay. And I did a live demo unrehearsed of um, Native. And I used, I loaded in some patches that I created in Helix and come out a couple of my three channel patches, like nice, clean, dirty, and insane uh, dirty. Now, obviously, the only thing I wouldn't be able to use would be any loops I may have programmed in, uh, which I didn't on those patches. And the sound was phenomenal. And so that's the first testimony. People were like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. And we're looking at, what, a three ninety nine US dollar price? Is that correct on Native? If you're just buying it out the door, then there's discounts if you have certain qualifying products. If, if you're just buying it out the door, yeah. yeah. So still not bad. 400 yep. bucks. Yep. And, and if you're a Helix, Helix rack owner, you get it for considerably less. So That's right. Well, here's my secondary testimony on it, and this has happened just yesterday. So over the past week, I've been recording through Logic, a really cool, um, my cover, and doing it with a boy. We're going to do Van Halen's Running with the Devil. Um, and getting the, you know, using Nick's patch that he wrote, uh, the Van the EVH patch is up on Custom Tone, and I changed it with an IR, but regardless, that's all I've added to it. Recorded really, really good guitars. They sound nice and rich. And then I realized during the guitar solo, I forgot the Phase 90. And I, for, and I, I just... I've been doing mm-hmm. this for so long. I didn't want to go back and re- redo my solo because I kind of nailed it on one spot. I used Native just as the plugin, just and that's the only thing I used Native yep. for. Went on on the my my solos are panned left and right. Added two effects, the same on each channel. Went to the um, the script phase, which is called the script phase, in there added it. Put um kind of you know kind of like Eddie would do about eleven o'clock on the uh, on the dial kind of thing. Uh, mix was kind of you know somewhere in the middle, and it sounded great. And that's just boom boom, and that thirty seconds, and I had my phase sound without having to redo my yep. track. Oh, and, and and if you remember all of the all the photos and the interviews with huge studio engineers 
you know, a decade ago, mm -hmm. they would have multiples of everything. Like here, here's a rack of LA two A's and a rack of 1176s and a rack of distressors. And, oh, I'm going to have four lexicon PCM 91s because I need to run all four simultaneously. And now with it, you know, with the, with the plug-in era, because, um, and you know, that's even the best engineers in the world are now mixing in the box. Yeah. You can run Helix native on everything simultaneously until your computer craps out, yep. which is, which is awesome. Now you don't have to worry about, Oh, I have to reamp through this. And if I tweak something, I have to then track it through Helix again. And it works really great for reamping. But if you don't have to reamp at all, if you just tweak a little thing, press play and it's changed, that's so much more convenient, especially if you're running multiple instances. And in my case, I'm running, sometimes 20 instances of Helix native in a session. So. Wow, yeah, yeah, because you're using it mainly. And sometimes it's just a distortion sure. or a distortion in a delay or I'm running, I'm running the, you know, plateau verb uh, as a, on the background vocal bus and I'm just goosing it by 20% or something like that. Too. Mm -hmm. The ability to automate it without having to deal with MIDI where it just shows up in an automation lane yep. in your DAW is so helpful. Something, something. I, I know this was you that said this before too. You were giving some people some tips um, through the various Facebook groups, Chad's group, and a bunch of other groups too. And I've just grabbed a device here. It's in my hand. I've got an Apogee Jam, um, uh, Jam ninety six K digital. That's what I use sometimes when I run into uh, into native. And you, you mentioned the the mm -hmm. secret to not only your product but you know the competitors' products and that too is to make sure you're not even anywhere near like the. Uh, you want to stay as in green as possible on your levels. Is that correct for getting the best signal into the into native? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really because the, the actual models within Helix and Helix Native are expecting an instrument level signal. Yes. But typically, if you buy an off the shelf audio interface, it's going to have, it might have an instrument level signal, but it also has an input gain knob on it. Mm -hmm. And the first inclination people have is, I'm going to turn this up and get the, the, you know, the levels really hot. Mm -hmm. And that's not what your pedals want. It's not what your real amp wants. You don't have a big knob at the beginning of your signal path on your floorboard and amps. No. Um, so you want to run that instrument level signal in as much as you want, which is also a big reason why Helix doesn't have a variable input either. It has right. either a pad on or off mm -hmm. because we want the models to be hit with the same signal that the real pedals would be hit with. Gotcha. Makes total sense. For this particular unit here, I, I I have to pretty much turn my volume, the input volume, to like zero. Like, it was yep. not, there's no zero. It's just either down or all the way up. So, I mean, it, and that's the closest I can get. And I never even go into the uh, into the yellow. It's nice and green. And my signal comes through pretty clean. And when I play it through native and I play through my, my reference monitors, it sounds like I'm playing the Helix. It, it sounds just like it. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. fantastic. And the nice thing about this, too, what people may not know is it's not very often that we can walk into a guitar center or, or any of these mom and pop shops and say, hey, I'd like to take a Helix home for 30 days and track. Can I do that? You know, maybe your mom and pop shop might let you if you know them or something. But you can go to the website, download native. And is it still a 30 day trial? Yeah, yeah, fifteen day trial. Or fifteen day trial. Yeah. It. yeah. So you yeah. can try it with your with any Absolutely. of your software and you don't like it, you're not out anything. And chances are you're gonna be uh, light activating it before those days are up because it's it's phenomenal. Wicked. Yep. Let's jump back over a few other comments in the chat here. We're going to come back and we are going to uh, uh, talk about the user interface design of, of Helix because that's something that we all tend to like and tend to uh, find sure. very user friendly. Um, Full Circle is saying he, he is very interested in the partnerships, what the partnerships bring to Variac. So that's going to be really cool. Definitely working with a great guitar company. Uh, Daryl McMillan says, hey, folks, Matthew Gregory, please, please, please have the diesel VH4 on next update. I know you guys get all these. I, I want some EVH amps. That'd be cool. But you know what I mean? I, I think I've, I've said this yeah. a few times in the groups. I would love this. I would love this. But I'm so happy with what we have. But everyone has a wish list, right? But we'll see. That'll be coming up sometime. Mm -hmm. um, NASCAR is on, but I'm watching a race. That's from Ricky. Uh, let me see here. Pino says... Um, Hey, there you go. There could be some more awards coming with power cabs. Wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised. And there's this weird guy. He keeps creeping my chat. This Frank Rashad guy. Um, he's he's always creeping my channel. Hey, Frank. How you doing, oh, buddy? Hey, Frank. <laughs> um, Marcel Blade is for greeting from Holland. Thank you for joining from Holland. Um, everyone's uh, happy to see Frank. Carlos Santon says uh, for Eric Klein, can a Helix HX effects be used as a foot controller for my Helix rack instead of buying a dedicated floor controller? And I think that's no, correct? Uh, it can. I mean, you can send MIDI data oh, right, out right, and right. Um, and a lot, any of the individual blocks or foot switch uh, representation could be I could I could conceivably create a template for HX effects to use it as remote, but it's okay. not going to have nearly the type of bi-directional yeah. communication that uh, 
that that rack has with control. Yeah, I would just wait, watch for a really good deal. Watch for a used one. Trade, want something that gets traded in. Look for a, a used deal on a on a, a control. That, that's probably yeah. There, there's there's something really special about the fact. That, I mean, if you if you think about it, when we when we first designed Helix, it was designed. Uh, we when we were talking about the rack and the control. It, from the very beginning, we're like, all right, the control has to effectively be a helix split into two boxes. Mm -hmm. And it has to behave exactly the same way as if the foot switches are built into the rack. Yeah. And that communication protocol is really, really complicated. And you cannot cop that with MIDI, unfortunately. It just yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Perfect. So, well um, good answer. Well, that's a good answer. Uh, Charles Green says, what's up, people? Uh, Peanut One says, hey, Frank. Uh, now, here, here's a question here, and I'm just going to preface this question by saying there are sometimes uh, folks with questions that may be leading to other products that could be coming down the road, so if we may not be able to answer some of these questions, but here's a question from Michael Forrester that says, any plans for a new Variax acoustic? Is there anything you can comment on or can't comment on that okay. unfortunately no problem so there we go that's and that's fine and that will happen from time to time and that's why i will a, say that i think yamaha sells a million acoustic amp guitars a year something ridiculous like that yeah worldwide okay. so um they they are hardcore experts at acoustic guitars so there you go so there you go michael thank you for the question and, and please understand there's some questions that we won't be able to answer uh ricky me says um Here's an idea about a unit like a GK3 that's a standalone variant with pickup. Oh, uh, and FNAF, Gam FNAF Gamer says, hey, how's everyone today? Ricky Mees, Variac. Oh, he very, he's got autocorrect. says Variac. Uh, Zach Thong is here saying, hey, Eric, Matthew Gregory. Uh, high, more high gain, high gain amps, please. I imagine there's probably some more high gain amps coming. I mean, as you mentioned, too, with yep. the Placator, um, that really um, uh, is a great name, by the way, too. But a lot of that really settled a lot of people. I was the PV Panama guy for the longest time because it was closest thing to Van Halen. And now I'm switching a lot of my patches to replace it with Placator, and uh, it's, it does the job. It's great. Uh, let me see here. Carlos says, the Placator is my main amp now. Yeah, there you go. Sounds sounds and feels so nice. Um, and I mean, this is cool, talking about names. Full Circle says, I can't wait to see what they come up with a name for the diesel hard-to-top Placator. And that's that's kind of cool, too. Obviously, for copyright, uh, you have to have come up with the unique names and things like that, too. Um, it, do you guys ever have, like, do you just bounce ideas around with uh, one another in the office, say, well, what do we call this thing and things like that? No, we do. Um, normally, I, uh, I, you know, Sam or Ben are two sound designers. They'll they'll come up with a name or they'll start an email thread. So Team Helix, will they'll just get this email thread. And some of the, some of the uh, model names we come up with are pretty controversial. Yeah. Some of them are not safe for work. Yeah. And they're almost always funny. And uh, and so um, and then we have to do the Google search and it has to go through legal. So we have an in-house legal who goes and makes sure that it's not, you know, violating a copyright or anything like that, too. And yeah, um, more than once we've done a, a, a deeper Google search and gone, oh, no, there's some weird pedal made back in 89. I guess we got to come up with the new name. Yeah. Or someone so, today, even brand new today, but it, there may be a small little boutique company, you know, one offs here and there, and and you know they have a registered name on the product or something, and you just don't know. Exactly. Yeah, so it's not exactly. as easy and as saying. And, and some people will give us grief for why Helix Native doesn't have big fancy pretty pictures and the panels like you know some other plugins do. And mm -hmm. the answer is because we'll sometimes have to change the name at the last second, and we wouldn't want to delay a firmware release because of graphic design. Yeah. So. Um, we want, we wanted to keep the art as clean and consistent and predictable as possible. And, uh, and then, so, and Brandon actually, uh, Brandon Frenzel, he does all of our graphic, all, all the graphics for uh, Helix native, the little icons. And that's stuff right. Like yeah. That, he, so. he mentioned that. That's awesome. That, that is very cool. Yeah, that's what we talked about. So he this. just finished, he just finished the, the graphics for 2.6. Okay. So. Nice. I, so. we've, we've, we've all talked about this and every member of your uh, staff that's been on the show, all of you guys and girls wear multiple hats, you know, in that company. And, and that's oh, obviously yeah. we a have secret. To, to... We have to. There aren't nearly enough of us to, for us to do one thing. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Um, we're going to we're gonna ask one more question here. Then we're going to jump over to about a four-minute break because I've got a video I'm going to play for you guys. We're going to have a very, very big, I think it's an epic, uh, giveaway thanks to uh, the good folks here at Line 6. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But the question I have for you right now, of all the, more of a statement, I guess, 
is of all the modelers that out there and software and things like that, I find, you know, whether people say Helix is the best or this one's the best or whatever, I, I personally feel, and I think a lot of people share the sentiment that Helix has the easiest uh, user interface. It's something that where if you're scared to get in there and start twisting knobs and stuff like that, Helix is, is for you. I mean, it's definitely going to take away that intimidation. Share with us. Obviously, that's your baby. Share with us kind of the uh, the effort that went into that, the R and D, uh, and you know how many maybe versions you went through before you finally said, you know, I think we we're ready to release. This is comfortable. We well, we scrapped uh, full designs twice. So wow. this is our this is the third iteration that people have actually worked on uh, and looked at. I've, I've mentioned mul- numerous times, but the first version had a touch screen, mm-hmm. um, and we didn't think people were quite ready for it then. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but when it comes to ease of use and user interface, it's not just, oh, let's make big screens. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all, all about, uh, there's kind of three facets that, that the design team went after. And what's nice is because we have dedicated designers, um, that work in parallel to the actual coders and the sound design and the architects. Uh, we're, we're able to spend all of that time that, that the other guys are modeling things and building engines. We get to go in and fine tune and tweak and test with end users and make sure that, yes, it is as easy as we think it is. Mm-hmm. The trick with Helix is because it's actually incredibly deep. It's, it's difficult making something so deep, uh, discoverable and, uh, and fast to get around. So if you have something that's very simple, a product that, all right, cool, I can do five things. It's really easy to make that a simple product. But when you have something that's really layered and deep, uh, it's, it's, it's a trick to a making somebody look at it and figure it out Mm -hmm. automatically without reading the manual. That's called discoverability. There's the intimidation factor. If you have something that has just tons of knobs and tons of buttons on it, it doesn't matter how easy it is, it's going to feel intimidating because it has all of that stuff, which is why we ended up hiding a lot of the buttons under other buttons. So yeah. the foot switches are buttons. The, f- the foot switches are also press hold functions. The knobs are buttons. The joystick is up, down, left, right, turn and push. So um, so we were able to hide a lot of functionality and make it appear as if it's easier than it really is. But the, the big thing that I'm a, a huge proponent for is speed of use. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I grew up in, you know, I spent so much time in studios and my old business partner was one of the Pro Tools engineers when he worked on Michael Jackson records and that oh, wow. sort of thing. And, and he was so fast at the keyboard commands in Pro Tools that he would have to let go and watch and wait for the screen redraws to, to catch up to him. Wow. And they were so fast. And every little, little tiny decision you make, if you can, if it happens in real time, mm-hmm. your mixes sound better because you're not constantly making the decision of whether you should do it, whether it's worth the effort. If right. the effort is zero, you just do it. Okay. And that's really, really important. So all of the shortcuts, which is why we're always harping on people to read the cheat sheet because the cheat sheet has the shortcuts. Mm-hmm. And the more shortcuts you know, the faster you can make tones and the better your tones sound because now you're not worrying about is this going to make it sound worse or better oh i just use snapshots i can go back between two and do an a b test to see whether or not this version of the tone is better or not oh now here's a c version on snapshot three little things like that can, yeah can do wonders for making your tones better you know something i love you might get a kick out of this but as a as a new helix user or not necessarily a new user but you know not the most knowledgeable yet um, I, I love the home button. So you're, you're, I mean, the home button is like, mm-hmm. go take me home, man, take me home. You're in there somewhere and you're messing yep. something up and you're just about to cause damage to something you maybe spent some time on and you, you tweaked it too much. It's like, you know what, where do I go? Go back home. And then, then move yep. your, your joystick over and go to a block and start editing again. But that home button can be your best friend, I think. Yeah, it, it helps a lot. It's helping yep. me. No matter, no matter what, that's why, that's why. I, Exactly. So if there's ever a new Helix with a touchscreen, there still has to be a physical home button. <laughs> yeah, take me home. Home, James. Always, so. That's right. Well, listen, we're going to come back here in yep. a second. We're and there has take... to be an amp button that instantly takes you to the amp tone stack knobs. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. Home and amp. Home and amp. That's right. The only two things that matter, yep. you know, uh, stop for gas, maybe in between. And save. You have to have a dedicated save button. 
because you you know you want to be able to double press it and to not lose your yeah. stuff because you've got to like oh I don't I don't need to save it that's like four steps if it's that yeah. now you're always saving I know love that love that for sure okay so we're gonna have a contest announcement this is about a four minute video give or take so uh, I'm gonna paste the link as well in the chat for a second and for those that are searching you can go down to the description of this video to the very bottom because I wanted to hide it before you so no one would see it because I don't think anyone reads my descriptions of my videos anyways but it's buried down to the bottom but thanks to the uh, f your fine staff there. I know you didn't even know about this. So I surprised you with it today. I didn't know about <laughs> it until today. So We're giving something away. It's uh, going to run for 30 days. So I'm going to turn it over to the video. So Eric, if you need to take a break, you had a quick break. And everyone, pay attention to this video because we're giving something massive away. Here we go. Let's uh, have a look. The minute you get it, all you gotta do is click the link. All right, sorry guys. So we had no audio in that video. So I'm gonna kind of give you the, the Coles Notes version of that. Basically, uh, the link I've just pasted in the chat right now. So I'm gonna paste it one more time. Uh, no problem, you can still enter everyone. So here it is right now. You're gonna go to this link, you're gonna click it. You're going to enter in your email address and uh, first name, that's all I'm asking for. It is a little simple skill testing question just to make the contest work. And it's not, there's no skill required. You just gotta mention who's giving this away. Uh, take it to the next page. It's gonna give you a lucky URL. It's a very, very, very important uh, link. You're gonna take that link and share it everywhere you go. For every person that you refer to the contest, you get three bonus entries. And then there's different platforms. You can like us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. There's gonna give you a bunch of different uh, chances to win there. Also, uh, subscribe on YouTube. It's going to give you 10 bonus chances. And then there's a link that will take you right to the Line 6's website to read more about the uh, Helix LT processor. We're going to give you two bonus chances just for clicking that link and going to read about it. A couple paragraphs, and you get to learn more about the LT. And lastly, there's a little simple video you can watch, and it gives you other bonus chances. So uh, in all, there's a whole whack of chances that you can get uh, to particularly to, to, to qualify to win uh, the Helix LT processor. And that's around $1,000, somewhat U.S. dollar prizes that about, right, Eric? Somewhere in that neighborhood, about a thousand bucks. Uh, yes, nine ninety nine US yeah, map. I thought so. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you guys got the link. Okay, now we got it. All right. I'm not sure if they're saying they got audio now, so we're gonna we're gonna just kill the video anyways. But it's available. It's gonna run for thirty days, and then we will draw a random winner at the very end of the contest. And um, Line Six will be shipping that lucky winner a brand new uh, hot Helix LT. I'm really excited about it. Wicked. So everyone, good luck on that. That's cool. Yeah, good luck on that, and and have some. Uh, have some fun with that. Share with your friends. And the more you share, the more you, you tend to qualify. It is going to be random nonetheless. But hey, extra bonus chances are great, right? Everyone could stand to use some of that. Um, let's talk a little bit about... No, this is... I, I'm going to kind of rephrase my question to you a little bit because you, uh, I didn't know you use Helix uh, Native more so than the hardware, but this will still apply. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us, um, you know, people getting into it for the first time, whether it's Native or Helix, 
um, Jason Sedites is a great is a great um, a patch creator, and everyone respects him in the community, uh, mm-hmm. and, and they they worship what he does when it comes to patch creation. But I'd like to know from someone yourself who was you know has such a vested interest in the product, uh, how you create patches. Can you share with us any tips? You know, right out of the box or the digital box, if that's you know downloading, um, how you would go about creating patches. Yeah, I mean the the trick is to is to treat every preset like you're building a pedal board from scratch. So so it except obviously the signal flow is backwards because we start on the left and go to the right versus versus pedals which are the inputs on the right and, and you go out the left. So but if if you're familiar at all with any of these uh, any of the pedals or any of the amps, you might want to start with that amp and maybe start with a couple pedals that you're used to and put them in the order that you would expect to put them in. And then just start from there and get yourself a sort of a starter bass tone that you happen to like. Bass as in B-A-S-E, not bass, unless you're playing bass. Mm-hmm. Like I am today. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and then at that point, because there are so many different pedals and amps to try in Helix, slowly start swapping things out. Like if you happen to have a tube screen, you're like, oh, let me see what an OCD might sound like pushed into you know, the EVH. So things like that, and then slowly start building things. If you start to build, like, throwing pedals everywhere, it's going to sound really bad. Yeah, I, I agree. Just going to make a quick comment here, uh, something I didn't mention for the contest as well, too. So as soon as you enter, the minute you enter, there's going to be an email sent to you. It's going to come to you from EVH and Gear TV, and it's just going to make sure that you are a valid person. So check for that email, and until you click that link, that won't confirm your entry. So make sure yeah, uh, make sure you confirm that email. Look for that email right away. You should get it almost instantaneous. And uh, once you've clicked that email, then whatever you've done will confirm your entry. So that's very, very uh, very important. And Brian Schmaltz says he did. So uh, reach out to me through the EVH uh, and Gear face- TV Facebook page, facebook.com slash EVH Gear TV, and I'd be more than happy to uh, try to be a troubleshooter for you guys and girls if there's any uh, problems that way. So let's talk a little bit. We, earlier we touched base on HX Effects. So that's been out for a while now, uh, obviously, and people are really using it, mm-hmm. as we were mentioning. Um, it was noted a while back that the full blown editor for that, uh, to be able to create patches and, and things like that is coming end of spring. Can you give us an update on that a little bit? Yeah, we're in beta right now and it, it's working really well. It sounds great. We're just squashing some last minute bugs at this point. So, okay. um, it, that's going to correspond with firmware 2.6. Um, 2.6 will obviously have the clean channel of the Freedman and the clean channel of the, the Mesa Lone Star, which we owe everybody because we just came up with the dirty channels in January. Okay. So um, that'll include that uh, and a couple extra surprises in there too. Not the biggest update that we've ever done, but we're excited to get it out there. So. Oh, good. Fantastic. I know a lot of people are excited about that as well too. Um, you know, for now, for now, I think you can update firmware and things like that, but the full, full blown editing is going to be a nice uh, benefit as well, too. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, one thing I've never asked you about before, uh, you know, we've talked to all, so much tech and, and everything else. What, share, share with us, obviously, you know, my bands, like I'm into Van Halen and things like that. What, what's the music that is uh, mm-hmm. on your playlist a lot? <laughs> <laughs> all week I've been listening to 90s hip hop. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we just moved into this uh, this new place, and um, and we're we're gonna get uh, I think one of those Alexa things where you say, "Hey Alexa, play this." And my wife said, "Hey, play '90s hip hop." And then we just watched uh, Straight Outta Compton again. So I don't know. So that's that's this week, and then last week was doom metal, and the week before that it was film scores. The week before that, I think it was. Um, 80s synth pop and then before that it was canadian industrial music so it was all skinny puppy in front line assembly and that sort of thing so oh yeah right on it it changes day to day that's that's cool though that's good versatility right yep i like that as well too and we were actually driving into the city today too we're playing some stuff and it's funny the wife is uh totally into rival sons and it, it, I, I can't complain about this because when we're in the car, when I'm in the car, it's Van Halen and nothing else. Uh, or else maybe sometimes Gorillaz. It's uh, the boy's favorite band, <laughs> Gorillaz. But today I actually told her, I said mm-hmm. I had um, a virus on the iPod and uh, I wiped out a few things. It wiped out Rival Sons, it wiped out Katy Perry, and it wiped out something oh. else. And so we're listening to the boy's Gorillaz all the way into the city. 
And, uh, and then on the way back, I, was, I, I couldn't live with the, the lie anymore. And I had to come clean and say, there's no virus in my popped on rival sons for her. So she was happy. But if you were to look at my <laughs> playlist on the iPod, I've got everything from, from Beatles to Van Halen to like mm-hmm. Katy Perry and rival sons, you know, it is nice to have a little bit of everything and you can really be surprised. Sometimes you play I have show. all that in there too. So yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with that at all. So a while back, this is something too, like, you know, and you can never make everyone happy when it comes to a product. You know that. Um, everyone knows that. You, you you can't be the one company that does it all. And the only some some of the some of the minor things I've heard people complain about. You know, one they'll talk about a tuner and okay, well, don't worry about the tuner. That's coming. The fix that's on our list, but it's down the road. But tuner so, is coming. That hey, there you go. That's good to know. Uh, but another thing people talk about, and I don't see anyone coming at with the, you know, um, guns blaring or you know horns you know, and steam coming at you. But they will mention polyphonic uh, pitch. And it's something mm-hmm. that you talked a while back that, you know, you're working with some creative people uh, to take that to the next level. And I like the fact that you mentioned earlier in the program where you're never satisfied with where you are and you're, you're taking measures to improve on that. Where, where are you right now in that, uh, that direction with Polyphonic uh, and um, maybe share some updates on that with us? Well, right now we're, to be perfectly honest, we're waiting for them to free up and they have, cause they have other stuff on their plate right now. Um, we're hopefully we'll have something not too far in the distant future. What's what's nice about it is you think about the the actual polyphonic pitch shift algorithm when they actually do the math, the raw algorithm that then gets crunched by the DSP. Um, with the right sets of algorithms with various you know, DSP constraints and uh, various levels of DSP usage, Ben and Sam can then go and take those component pieces mm-hmm. and create tons and tons of of different new effects and that sort of thing and now this includes some an improved tuner because polyphonic pitch now can improve any type of pitch detection algorithms we use yeah uh, it also it 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 deals with how feedbackers work it deals with how whammies work it deals with how smart harmonies work it deals with uh, another probably 10 or 12 effects that i can't talk about mm-hmm. they're all based on the core polyphonic pitch algorithm that we haven't ever had. Line 6 has never done that before. So, And we have a team that is very well known for that sort of stuff. I probably shouldn't say who they worked for before, mm-hmm. but um, but we're really, really excited to have them on board and they're full-time Yamaha guitar division employees now. So, Oh, that's fantastic. I like, I like how you mentioned that too. It makes total sense. The fact that if it's reading uh, the frequencies properly, that obviously will help tremendously on a tuner, you know, with, you know, good mm-hmm. input in, good input yep. out. Right. So that's fantastic. Um, here again, this is, um, I, I, I don't know what's safe to ask, but I'm just going to, I'm going to try to ask this question and you, you don't have to answer it if you can't. Izzy says, uh, is a two, will the tuner be in 2.6? Okay, that's fine. That's fair enough. Well, but um, I'm sure. So, it's... so what happens is it's sort of like how everybody got all the reverbs at once, and we're mm-hmm. happy. Well, you know, we're working on future reverbs as well. But you'll there's always sort of a theme to every release, and um, although the next release might not have a theme, we might have to make up a theme. But okay. uh, the reverb update, which was also the legacy update, but it was we we you know we had our sound designers and our DSP guys create a new reverb core algorithms that were then manipulated into blocks by Ben and Sam. So, mm-hmm. so once you get that, that DSP in, in, I guess in the bucket, so to speak, you can then crank out all sorts of other stuff too. So, and that was five reverbs, I think, right? Uh, five or six. Yeah. I, I should know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somewhere in there, but it was definitely, it was like, it was nice because mm-hmm. that was uh, taking people by storm. They're like, okay, the new reverbs, you know, cause everyone was out there saying, you know how much, and I, I even have one here on my, my big board, the Strymon big sky. And there's, there's just mm-hmm. some reverbs, uh, and your new reverbs that are like, wow, you know, when you get that comfort zone of your Strymon and things like that. Um, and you know, just beautiful, just beautiful. So that yeah, was, and we're big fans of Strymon too. So yeah, yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Uh, so people, a few people over in the chat are, are figuring out the contest. Um, Gary Davlin says, uh, uh, where did he say? He says, well, um, click on one of the share things. After you confirm all your items will get checked and your account will go up. And Carlos Santin as well says, a link for the contest works. Follow the instructions. Confirm your email. 
click on all the share options once you've confirmed your email and you will get additional entries. You will see those start to increase. And then the more will, if you come back to that link after people have entered via your share URL that you've shared out there, hopefully, uh, you'll see your account increase as well too. And just watch for updates uh, uh, when that closes, 30 days, and uh, we'll draw a random winner and Line 6 will be sending you a, um, a, a Helix LT. It's going to be fantastic. So or, n- or not, unless Frank and I happen to win. The, oh, there yeah. you go. I, no, I, we're, we're not eligible. That's right. Sadly. Yeah. You have to read the fine print. Uh, anyone uh, yeah. that works for Line 6 or works for EVH and Gear TV, which is one person, um, <laughs> so I can't win. I'm not playing. Uh, Line 6 staff can't win. Um, but, uh, you know, the... Ch- Wait, so your son can't email him? He can't. He cannot. He's not entitled. He's not entitled. Uh, but we're lucky. We've got two Helix. How, okay, what's the plural? Heli? Helix? I, what's, how do you say more? Helices. Than, helices. Okay. It's- the helices. Yeah. There, I, we learned a new term today. That's the takeaway from today's show. Mm-hmm. One, we're giving one away, and two, when you have more than two yep. helixes, they're helices. All right. Yep. If, if if somebody says helixes, that's fine too. We okay. Don't, we don't really care. It's I, like it's like Bob Moog. If people call his company Moog, he doesn't care. If he calls it Moog, he doesn't care. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. I've been calling him Heli. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But I, whatever. Now I know the term. So we are pretty much. Although a GIF is G I F, not J I F. Yes, the boy and I are watching. I'm going uh, to my go to going to my death with that. Yeah, GIF. That's GIF. Right. I was one of the guys before I, when I when I first got into web design and things like that. I was saying GIF, and it's like okay, it's not peanut butter, it's GIF. <laughs> yeah. And some people will fight you. You know, you go to you go to like a con, oh, yeah. like a, to a convention con, whatever, uh, or you know, a programmer con or whatever, web development. And uh, you know, hey, uh, that, that's a, that was a great animated GIF you did. Um, you know, prepare to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, fisticuffs. Um, here's a couple comments towards the end. Here, and we're going to wrap up. Uh, these are nice uh, uh, feedback from Izzy uh, Versetti. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, um, uh, uh, apologize if I'm not. It says I love my Helix. We appreciate your work. Uh, greetings from Mozambique. Awesome. Cool. That is really nice. I'm not sure what time it is. It's got to be late evening there, I'm assuming, or tomorrow morning. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know that time zone. Uh, Full Circle says, uh, thanks, DI and Frank and staff for all you have done to continue with the Helix family. Amazing stuff. Um, Single Coil Lover says, free lesson courtesy EVH TV. I, I, I want to say thank you as well, too. Number one, for the support that all you guys do. You know, we always we always uh, tend to toot the horn here. Frank and I still will for forever. And Frank's going to be coming on the show right away as well, too. Not next weekend, but the weekend after cool. so the next Sunday. Next Sunday is uh, Mother's Day. Uh, obviously, we're looking mm-hmm. forward to everyone having a great time with um, their significant uh, spouses and their moms and all those kind of things. Um, but Frank will be on after that. And Frank is a champion for sure. But Frank is just yeah. one of many that is there that like yourself, you're always on the forums, on the on the pages, the Facebook groups, always willing to help. Um, you know, and some people can be jerks sometimes. So I, I want this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, do you really want it? Is that, is that a feature you want us to drop everything else for and do that? But you're there to help people. And I've seen it from all the staff, from Brandon, from from Nick, from your marketing team, from Henry, all everyone, phenomenal people. And just uh, hats off to you for uh, for what you do for the community, not just to, and you nailed it earlier. You're not complacent and not uh, this, okay, well, we're here. We can let it fly. You're always wanting to strive for better. So hats off to your team. Um, and at, we, are, well, we we use the gear too, so we want to we want it to be as good as it can for our own shows and the rest of. Even though I don't play out with Helix, mm-hmm. I might in yep. the next couple of years. But yep. um, I'm in the studio. The rest of Team Helix, they're out gigging all the time. Dom just did a big show at the Wiltern uh, Thursday night, and it was all Helix. And it's it's. I mean, we're constantly striving to make it better. Oh, that's great. Well, very nice, very nice to know, and we feel it for sure. Um, Izzy says it's almost 10 p.m. So over there in, in Mozambique. So thank you for tuning in. That is fantastic. Um, Guitar News Network says awesome show as always. And Fred Siegel says thanks for everything. So uh, tune in, guys, if you can, guys and girls. This Thursday, UPS is telling me I should have a power cab here on Thursday. So I'll do a live broadcast Thursday evening. Just It's going to be an unboxing, and I'll see if I can power it up possibly. Um, and we'll, we'll have a quick look at that. And the, the first reaction will be kind of cool. Um, you know, you'll see. Well, me just, it, it's a cab. So make sure you burn it in like any other cab. So, mm, okay. Any, any tips? I just kind of run yep. through it and, uh, you know, chunk, chunk some distortion through it, or do I want to do it a little, a uh, little easier? No, I mean, the, the only big thing is make sure that your helix, if you're using it with helix mm-hmm. that you run it, run, make sure helix is running at line level, not instrument level. Cause yeah, I think uh, I am. Power cab is expecting a line level signal. Okay. Uh, and don't be afraid to go into power cab and crank the inputs too. So. Okay. 
I think I am on on line level right now. So because I'm I'm running directly to my uh, to my mixer. So I think I think I am. Perfect. Good. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, and Frank says, uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great uh, Sunday evening. Uh, uh, Eric, thank you once again for taking your time on a Sunday afternoon and coming to talk some uh, some Helix. I know it's it's a personal interest of yours, obviously, but there's other things you could be yeah. doing, so I'm very grateful. No, I'm sh- Shout out to my wife and my sister who are at the coffee shop down the street probably watching this. Oh, thank you to them and, as well. And thank you for not trolling it by asking really horrible questions like you threatened to do. So. <laughs> I know we've we've had a great chat here today, so but a big thank you to them too for the, for their consideration letting you do this as well. That's awesome. And you and I were talking as we close out the show here. You and I were talking uh, through Facebook the other day. You had provided, uh, and you didn't even know it was you. You'd provided a huge tip for us a while back on our show. Uh, one, and it was actually my very first episode of Helix Hour. Paul Heinmarsh was my guest, mm-hmm. and I was saying to Paul, it was a question I had for him. And, and he didn't know the answer, and, and I certainly didn't know the answer, and, and that's nothing to say anything bad about Paul. A lot of people didn't know this, this uh, tip. So let's say you got a delay um, on, one, on one snapshot. It's 200 and some odd milliseconds, and then you go to a, like a lead that has like something like a crazy 550 millisecond, and you would change from snapshot to snapshot. Your delay would either ramp up you know, really fast yep. or the opposite way, and we're like, oh, this is driving us crazy. And then you'd commented in the chat. I didn't even know it was you at the time said um, it was. I didn't remember it was me. (laughs) I know. I know. That was hilarious. You didn't even remember it was your YouTube channel. And so I said that how valuable that tip was. I think I I, uh, stickied that that comment, whatever. And it was very, very valuable. Um, Do you you remember offhand? uh, Because I don't remember the actual procedure. I did what you told me. But do you remember the procedure in the global settings to change that? Yeah. In uh, on the preferences sub menu of global settings, there's a parameter called tap tempo pitch. That's it. And you can choose it to authentic or transparent. Authentic, it means it's going to change pitch and give you those weird, cool, yeah. you know, stuff that I love personally. Mm-hmm. I want it to freak out like, yeah. like a real analog tape delay mm-hmm. um, or like how the real Bucket Brigade stuff does too. Yes. Uh, but if you prefer to minimize those sort of audio artifacts, you can ch- set it to transparent. So. Yeah. A perfect example for people that may not know what that means if they're just kind of new to some gear, uh, and but they, they watch my Van Halen show. Obviously, eruption. A lot of people think Eddie Van Halen's using a whammy bar for that, that crazy, crazy dive at the end. But that's actually slowing it, slowing the delay down. You know, and you can cheat mm-hmm. with that on it, like you know, like a Boss, uh, you know, DD3 delay or something like that, or any kind of delay pedal, and just turn the time down as you hit that low E note, and you can kind of simulate that. That's what we're describing. But sometimes mm-hmm. in, in a digital environment, you want to go from you know a quick uh, rhythm echo to a nice uh, big lead, and you don't want those mm-hmm. trails. That's what it does. So thank you for that tip once again. That's something that I think that's a, I'm going to be saving for a rainy day again and again and again so awesome everyone thank you so very much for tuning into the helix hour uh don't forget to check out that contest the link is in the description below and i'll be sharing it everywhere as well too it won't it won't be something you have to search for it'll be on the facebook page facebook.com slash evh gear tv 30 days from now we'll be hearing somebody's going to have a brand new helix lt processor we're looking forward to announcing that whoever that is so listen, you go have a fun time with the family. Enjoy this beautiful Sunday after. It's actually early for you. It's uh, three, mm-hmm. 4 o'clock here Eastern Standard Time. So uh, I'm going to go to do the same as well too. Spend some time with the family. Have a good one. I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air. And everyone, you have a great weekend. We will see you very soon. Thanks, Eric. Take care, guys. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching the Helix Hour. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. An extra special thank you to the staff at Line 6 for their continued support. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so right now and feel free to share our content with your friends. See you next time on the Helix Hour.